We've been seeing a lot of Affinity Photo, and truth be told, if you're a graphic designer, it gives Photoshop a run for its money at a fraction of the cost. But if you're a photographer, well, here, let me show you. Throughout this project, I'll be working with one and only one image file captured with an iPhone 14. So nothing that special, but it is 10 bits of data per channel, 48 megapixels. So we've got a lot to work with. I did shoot it as a raw image, so it is a DNG file. Here I am in Photoshop. I'll go up to the file menu and choose the open command. There's that DNG file. It's looking all bright and cheerful. Part of that's because I did develop this image in advance in Lightroom. So there are some development settings in addition to the pixel data. Now, the image is bright and cheerful for sure if you like blue and green, very bright green. Actually, a lot of yellow is going on here as well, but we've got a problem with white balance. So I'll press the shift key is what you do here in Camera Raw or Lightroom and just drag like so in the clouds. And that's gonna balance the image pretty nicely. I'll twirl open color so we can see that I've got a temperature value of 6,500. That's what I want. I'm gonna take the tint up to 12. And otherwise I'm liking what I'm seeing, but everything that's got an eye next to it, a bright eye, means that I've made some modifications. So for example, if I were to click and hold on this eyeball, this is before and this is after the settings that I've applied. We've got some optic settings as, as well. So you can see that the, the mountains are kind of in the background there. And then I bring him into the foreground a little bit by compensating for the lens. In any event, I want to open this image as an editable smart object. So notice the open button. I'll press the shift key and click on open object. And we then have a smart object. Notice this guy right here in a layers panel. And that means that I can come back and edit those raw settings anytime I like. All right, now let's see how things compare to working inside Affinity Photo. It all starts off very much the same. I'll go to the file menu and choose the open command. There is that bright and cheerful DNG file with the new white balance settings applied, by the way. So Camera Raw went ahead and snuck that in before I opened the image inside Photoshop, but you wouldn't know it here inside the develop module and that's because even though this is a very powerful module by the way in its own way and it has access to all the raw image data all 10 bits per channel it does not read any of the information conveyed by Lightroom or camera raw and so that may be enough for many of you just to say, oh, in that case, I'm out. In which case, won't you do me a favor and subscribe? I just saved you so much time. But for the rest of you, what you would do is click on develop right here in order to switch back to the standard photo persona, as you can see. And we now have a raw layer style. Notice that which is very much like working with a smart object inside Photoshop. All right, let's say we wanna make some raw modifications, then double click on the thumbnail, just as you do inside Photoshop, and you're back in what's known as the develop persona. And notice right up here at the top, we have our exposure modifications. We can take advantage of those if we want. I'm gonna really crank up the exposure because the image is way too dark. And then we've got black point, which is a lot like the blacks value inside of camera raw. Notice, by the way, that I can see my shadow clipping. I'll turn on highlight clipping as well. And then if I drag up the black point value, you can see anywhere that's blue is shadow clipping. So I wouldn't want to go that high. I'll take it up to, let's say, 10%. And then we have this brightness value that's a lot like gamma. It's a lot like the old brightness value, if you remember that from the olden days of Lightroom and Camera Raw. Anyway, it, 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 it does not permit clipping, whereas exposure will clip colors, if that's not obvious on screen right now. And now I'm going to just drop down to enhance the next section. And I'm going to crank up the contrast value to 20 let's say, tab to clarity and take it up to 10. Notice that I'm getting more clipping as I work, but here's what's interesting. Actually, I'll tab down to vibrance and take it up to 10%. And as soon as I take a shift tab back to saturation, as soon as I take it up at all, watch the red and blue. I think it's hard to miss, but they go away. And so there's some bug at work currently that prohibits any saturation value other than zero. I'll change it back to zero right there. Notice right at that second, there it is. 
my shadow and highlight clipping are back, but then they disappear, which is, it was driving me nuts for a while. It's specifically saturation that does it. Isn't that entertaining? Anyway, again, wouldn't this be a nice time to subscribe? Who else is going to tell you that? I didn't know that till just recently. Now, I want to show you how to correct white balance. I'll go to the white balance tool right here. And the sky's just totally blown at this point. But here's what you do. You press the Alt key option on the Mac and you drag like so. And instead of shift key is what we were doing before in camera raw. And notice that we did correct the white balance. It looks a lot better. It's going to look even better in just a second. But I tell you what, I'll change this temperature value. Notice it's very similar to what we got in camera raw. I'll change it to 6,500. And then I'll take the tint value up to, let's say 10%. Shadows, highlights. We need that desperately, do we not? Because otherwise we're not seeing the shadows in the clouds. I mean, there's all kinds of information in those clouds. We can see it plain as day here inside Photoshop. And we're going to see it even better in Affinity Photo if I take up the shadows value. So I'm cranking up the shadows like crazy just to breathe life into them. Now, I've heard from a few folks that are saying this is nothing like increasing shadows and highlights inside Camera Raw and Lightroom. And that may be true but it does afford you some control. So I'll go ahead and take the highlights value down to negative 90%. You can see that we are now getting some feel for that cloud data up inside the sky. All right, now if you like, you can change the color profile. So notice profiles right here. I'll turn it on and make sure it's twirled open. Scroll down, click on this guy. It's sRGB right now, but I could change it to good old Adobe RGB if I'm more comfortable working that way. Things won't really shift on screen, by the way. It'll look more or less the same. And now I'll switch over to lens. There's all kinds of other controls like details, you know, for the sharpen and the noise and that kind of stuff. We're not going to deal with that right now, but I do want lens correction. I would like it to know the lens profile. Wait, wait one second here because I, I just want to show you something. Notice if I click develop in order to go back to the standard photo persona right here, Notice that we can see, I'll just hover over this area, iPhone 14 Pro, back triple camera, 6.86 millimeters, etc. Hey, real quick, have you ever wondered how to use the lens blur options in Camera Raw slash Lightroom to convert this fully developed photograph into this? You can't do this in Affinity Photo, I'm afraid. In fact, what you have to do is join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash now. All right, so now I'll just double click on this raw guy, once again, this thumbnail, in order to get access to my various settings here. They are dynamic, so everything that I assigned just a moment ago is still assigned, so I can modify those settings anytime I like. And this assumes, by the way, that you're using Serif Labs. This is very important for those of you who know what I'm talking about, as the raw engine. If you resort to Apple Core, then the things are not dynamic. So don't do that. That's only a Macintosh thing. Don't do it. Anyway, I'll switch back to lens and I am going to have to manually spe specify a profile. Isn't that bizarre? And I'll go with this one. It's not even a dead match. It's six millimeters, but whatever. It's going to help a little bit. And then I will click in this distortion value and I'll take it up to 20. Because basically what I want to do is I want to take those flat irons back in the distance and I want to move them forward a little bit. And I know I'm bowing them outward as well. I can live with that. And you can al you also have this thing right here, chromatic aberration reduction, which is going to take a moment for Affinity Photo to figure out what's going on, the development module specifically. But it is examining all the edges just to make sure that there are as few chromatic aberrations as possible. And at this point, there's all kinds of additional controls that you can investigate at your leisure. What I'm going to do is click on develop, which is just basically like clicking OK inside Camera Raw. And you are now applying those changes and you're going back to the standard photo mode persona if you prefer which allows you to modify the layers and so forth all right at this point the question is which program did a better job the develop module here inside affinity photo or camera raw inside photoshop and so here 
We have this great detail inside the grasslands, and the flat iron rocks are looking really good as well. But the sky's a little kind of flat, don't you think? Given that it really is a dramatic sky. And things are pretty blown out over here on the right hand side of the image. Compared with how things look in Photoshop, we have all kinds of detail inside the sky. Very dramatic sky, including this spectral highlight up here. The rocks could look a little better. And then the grasslands are shot. They look ridiculous or oversaturated. And so I'll double click on the thumbnail for the smart object and we will take advantage of some options that are not available inside the develop persona. These guys right here, the color mixer options. And so with hue selected, I'll switch to the targeted adjustment tool. And that way I could say, you know what? I want these greens right here to be more sort of emerald just over the top, let's say, just for the sake of demonstration. And then I'll drag in the yellows and make them less green. So they're more yellow, like so. They're still way too saturated. We'll come to that in a moment. These these rocks right here could be more purple. So I go, go ahead and drag to the right on those. You can see the values changing over here on the right-hand side of the screen. And I'll drag in the trees so that they're more green, even though they look ridiculous. They look like they're kind of like, you know, underwater or something not sure but hey that's that's where saturation comes in let's switch to that and also you have this right here it's so much easier to get to but i'll just go ahead and drag once again in the grasslands to take down the saturation values like so and then what i want to do is increase the saturation of the rocks make those purples even purpler and then of course take those trees those are pines up there they're evergreens and make them way way less saturated like so so that they look quite normal by comparison to the way they looked a moment ago now click on luminance right here so that this targeted adjustment tool in case you don't know about it takes on different personas if you will depending on which of those buttons is selected and so i just took some of the life out of the grasslands right there and then we have one more problem which is notice right here that we have oh come on let me zoom in please there they are we have some power lines and that's because this is a general this is not too far from my house actually we need power here and so i don't want to see it in the photograph however so i'll click on a remove tool and i'll just go ahead and drag very sloppily all over i don't care about doing a good job where this is concerned it's going to come out really easily as you're about to see. And this is not something you can do, by the way, inside the develop persona. You can't really do it inside Affinity Photo in general. And that's because it doesn't have AI. And so notice that we have these three different variations to choose from, any one of which I think is gonna be great. Actually, that third one's no good. The second one looks great. I'll click OK in order to accept that change. And you can see a moment later that we have made a big, huge difference this is before with just these radioactive grasslands down here. Grasses, if you prefer. I, mean, I don't think they qualify as grasslands. They're too small. And this is after. All right, let's compare the various versions of the photograph in Photoshop's full screen mode. So here is the image according to the developed persona inside Affinity Photo. Of course, because this is a raw image, you could go your own way. This is my initial development inside Camera Raw, and this is the final version of the image right here. Now, I can see a lot to recommend the Affinity Photo version, right? It's more naturalistic. It might even be truer to the actual scene as I captured it, but it's a little bit too picture postcard, in my opinion, whereas the image that I created in Camera Raw could be Lightroom, has a lot more drama. There's a lot more contrast in the foreground. We have a reduced amount of contrast in the background, so it stands out really clearly. And then we have all kinds of dramatic detail up here in the sky, including this spectral highlight up here at the top. So it's really up to you. You may prefer Affinity Photo, or you may prefer Photoshop, or you may prefer to tell me what you really think, in which case, comment below. Not to mention like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for a deep dive on lens blur in Lightroom and Camera Raw. Join me at patreon.com slash deeknow, and then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.